More reaction today to the news that a top executive with the Inu Development Limited Partnership made a million dollars in salary over the last two years. The agency exists to form partnerships with companies hoping to get in on lucrative contracts reserved for Aboriginal businesses in Labrador. Yesterday, we reported that CEO Paul Rich had left the partnership, but not before collecting a salary of $650,000 for last year alone. The development agency isn't talking, but this story has a familiar ring to the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Colin Craig speaks for the organization and we've reached him in Winnipeg. Colin Craig, tell me, what was your reaction when you heard that a top executive at this Inu development agency made over $650,000 in a single year? Well, it's, it's surprising. It's a huge, huge amount of money for such a small community. Uh, we have heard stories, you know, similar to this in the past where you have these small reserve communities and their elected officials or other officials there are just making astronomical sums of money. So it's, it's ridiculous given that in many of these communities, uh, poverty is rampant. You say that this has happened before. Just how familiar is a story like this in uh, Aboriginal communities? That's pretty common. And that, that's the unfortunate thing is that in many of these communities, uh, yeah, like officials keep the information hidden from band members so they have no idea what's going on until someone sniffs around and either leaks the information or somehow we get our hands on it. Uh, that's the unfortunate reality. Uh, transparency concerns is the number one issue that we hear about from band members across the country by far. Just talk a little bit more about that because really that's how this story broke. Uh, I, I don't know who his sources are but our journalist Peter Cowan got his hands on some documents that showed these salaries. What kinds of transparencies exist around band uh, council financing and development agencies like this? Well not enough. I mean, right now the rules say that band members are entitled to know what the salaries are of top officials as well as elected officials in each reserve. But so often we hear from band members that they ask for these reports and either they don't get the reports at all or they get the reports and those pages are pulled so they don't get to see what's going on. And so we've been pushing hard on this issue to, to get this information transparent. The federal government has listened. There's legislation in Ottawa right now that when passed it will put this type of uh, information on the internet for everyone to see, which would especially help people living on reserves hold their uh, politicians accountable. When you look at these numbers, 650000 in a single year, give or take, about a million dollars over two years, how does that compare with some of the uh, higher end cases that you've heard about across the country? Well, it's definitely one of the highest. I mean, no doubt about it, the numbers are off the charts. Um, we'd also like to see the results, to see what type of results uh, that organization was delivering to that community in order to justify such a high salary. Uh, you know, unfortunately my gut's telling me there probably aren't the results there uh, to justify it, but uh, that's always part of the equation you have to look at is uh, not just what someone's getting paid, but you know, why are they getting such a high pay? Well, we've also heard that uh, Paul Rich, the person we're talking about here, he's no longer with the development agency. We're not exactly sure why he's gone. Um, you say you talk about the need for greater transparency, legislation to have these things posted online. Just talk about the sort of framework that you'd like to see here uh, just to improve the openness of how this money is being spent. Well, what, what the legislation is going to be doing is it's going to put the entire audit report on the internet, which would disclose the, the salaries of elected officials as well as uh, top officials within the, um, the reserve uh, administration. So that's a good thing. Um, exposing the audit reports will help people on reserves figure out where the money is going, see how well different organizations are doing, and it will help them understand if they think their officials are worth the money that they're getting paid or not. So that, that's exactly what we're looking for, that's what we pushed for, and that's what the federal government responded with in legislation. So we think that's a good first step at improving uh, some of the, the, the problems around transparency on reserves. And is that legislation, is it what, in front of the House of Commons now? Is it just proposed? What's the status of that piece of particular bill? It's, it's going to be going to committee coming up uh, this fall, and that's where different organizations and individuals will have a chance to uh, uh, present their their case on why they think the legislation is good or what they think should be changed that type of thing so uh, we're definitely looking forward to that uh, opportunity we're hoping we'll get called as a witness to just share with uh, politicians in Ottawa some of the stories we've been hearing from coast to coast we have heard from grassroots band members that they want more transparency and there's really no reason to deny it 
given that you can go on the internet right now and find out how much your provincial or federal politician is making across the country. Uh, reserve politicians should be no different. Okay, Colin Craig, thanks so much for speaking with me tonight. Why do I support the Canadian Taxpayers Federation? Because families deserve a break. Because someone has to keep our politicians honest. Because honesty and hard work should be rewarded, not punished. Alone, my voice may not be heard. But together, our voices can't be ignored.